call is now being recorded. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do today is um, the traction. I just want to tell you uh, two very quick things. First of all, diffraction is a phenomenon. It's basically spreading of waves passing through a slit. Slit means opening. Into geometric shadow. Geometric shadow means anything that is behind something. Else. So you got to remember that. Anyway, so keeping that in mind, then we should remember that um, if the wavelength lambda is like less than slit opening a then what happens is that the, what you see is very little diffraction happening almost like none and waves do not spread like into geometric shadows like this section that you see here these are the geometric shadows because they're behind the barrier or obstacle that we're trying to cross now if the wavelength sorry when the wavelength is greater like it's almost let's say almost similar to A, then the waves basically become rounded like this, which means they will spread like this into geometric shadow. And that's when you will see maximum observable diffraction. Although the general rule for diffraction is that greater the wavelength, greater the diffraction. But if uh, like the slit opening is too small, then the issue is that uh, then it doesn't really, you know, uh, it's not really visible because a lot of energy is lost. Now, Wavelength remains same. So whatever wavelength is here, that would be the same wavelength here, or that would be the same wavelength here as well. Speed remains same. Also, the 
frequency remains the same. Okay, in this. However, amplitude may decrease due to decrease in, um, you could say, uh, due to decrease in energy. When you're going forward, right, loses some energy. All right. Now, please uh, have a look. Let me know if you have a question. Everything is clear? Should I go on then? Yeah, yeah, you can write it down. Okay. While you guys are writing, I'll put the charger on. Then so then we're going to look at some of the questions. So in the first question it says diffraction is a term used to describe one aspect of the wave behavior. What does diffraction make possible? So diffraction basically spreads to geometric shadows, which means that first one is the ability to hear ability to hear uh, around corners, ability to hear high frequency, low frequency, that is not something diffraction can do because frequency remains the same. Ability to hear um, loud and quiet sounds, that's not what diffraction does. Ability to hear through a thick wall, it does not like cross the wall. It just spreads, so it means that this would be the answer. As if there is a you know opening, and you're standing here, and there is a whole wall. So across the wall, if somebody's speaking, so the waves are going to spread. <coughs> That's why. Anyway, then it says a water wave is diffracted as it passes through gap between two areas in the ripple time. The wave is observed to spread out as it moves through the gap. Which two factors both affect the amount of diffraction observed? What do you guys think? Go on, hurry up. Let me know. It would be the wavelength of the wave and the width of the gap. Okay, so obviously the wavelength and the width is going to change. Um, that would affect the amplitude has nothing to do with diffraction. Um, amplitude, frequency, they don't have any effect on these. Sir? Just let me know. Yes. Sir, it says that um, the amplitude may decrease due to decrease in energy. So is this in the case? So is this in both cases when it's a larger diffraction and lesser, but like just the further it goes, the amplitude decreases? Yes, that is 100% correct. But the point is, does it affect how much diffraction is going to take place? So the answer is no. No, it doesn't take a separate question. It doesn't, right? Yeah. It does that, you know, as in any wave, if the wave travels for very long, obviously its uh, amplitude is going to decrease because energy will be lost, right? That's fine. Hmm. Okay. Now, what do you guys think about this question? You want to read it? 
and let me know. This is an easy one. Hmm. Any answers? It's something behind like like a shadow. This is a geometric shadow. Obviously, the TV signals are going to go like to this and then they're going to spread behind this. So obviously, if you see something like this, you always uh, pick diffraction. Just remember this, all right? Okay, now, do you have any questions? Let me know, please. Yeah. Now, going to coherence. Coherence is, a, is basically a term used for coherent sources. And when we say coherent sources, it means that coherent sources emit waves that are in constant phase difference, which means is that if you look at this source, this is coherent. The reason why it is coherent is, oh my God, is because every point has like their phase difference we have, every point will have the same phase difference. But if you look at the other one, which is incoherent, so it started off with a different phase difference, and then suddenly there was an unusual activity that would have happened, right? So these two sources are incoherent because along the path, it has changed its uh, phase difference, right? So incoherent means that. Now, coherent sources are very important because for experiment, for Young's double slit experiment, coherent sources are needed. Otherwise, you don't get the whole, you know, um, kind of um, pattern that we see. Okay. Now you can write this down and then I'm going to go forward. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Javeria, Maham, Vijaya, Yaya, Ryan, Padija. Yes, sir, can you explain why they're needed? You ready? Sorry, come again. Can you explain why they're needed for the young double suit? I, I'll show you why. Why? Double set has a certain pattern it makes, right? Interference pattern. We need to create that in order to analyze certain things. And for that, where in social uses, I'm going to show you that. Now, bridge. Okay. Should I go forward? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, Young double slit experiment. So first of all, I'd like to tell you, young double slit means obviously there are two openings uh, from a coherent source, uh, based on color, right? And then they spread, okay? And when they spread, interference happens. Interference means that we've learned about two things previously. We learned about constructive interference, And we have learned about destructive interference. Constructive basically means that when two waves are going to meet in phase, right, it's going to get just a big wave. And when two waves are going to meet anti phase to each other, like 180 degrees and like 0 degrees, so it's going to cancel out each other. So, what it means is 
that if there is a maxima, maxima basically means that it is like a big wave and minimum is no wave, maximum big wave and no wave, maxima like this. So these fringes basically are like light spots which tell us how uh, interference is happening. It means from the slit, from the very center, we can say like uh, here, we'll say here, all of these points are meeting in phase and so on with this point and with this point, right? I'm going to show you this. But before we do that, we should understand that every single time Young's double state experiment or Young double state word comes in your question, you should remember this formula. The formula is A x equals to lambda t. Now, what is these x? I already labeled this. So A in here is the slit separation. Slit separation is this A right here, as you can see, it is between the two slits. X is fringe separation. Now, fringe separation X can be found out by two ways. Either you're gonna, uh, like you're gonna take it from adjacent maximus, or you can take it from adjacent minima, so it's the same distance. Then you have so are these values that are the wavelength. Yeah, what will be missing? You will see in the questions. All right. And D, this D is basically the distance of screen where you walk, we're looking at it from the slits. Would you guys remember this formula? Okay. All right. So basically, the moment here is something like this. You should remember that this, this uh, young double slit will only use this form. There's no other formula in young double slit that, that can be used. Okay. Now, the important part here is, in any case, I just want to emphasize on this, is that uh, this x, usually the question is about print spacing. So x can be written as lambda d upon a, which means that greater the wavelength, all right? So then greater thin spacing is, okay? Which means the spots are going to be far away. Then greater the distance from screen greater the frame spacing. Then, then you're going to write that smaller, the slit separation, greater the frame spacing. So you just need to look at the formula, see which are like directly proportional with or inversely, and comment on it whenever it's required. Okay, it's very very simple. Now we are described in that sense. Anyway, so now I'm gonna show you. Actually, I made a mistake, and I made a mistake by uh, not copying the interface pattern. I'm gonna re-upload the one of those, like I'm going to reload the PDF, but uh, only one page, so you can print that page out and you know attach it with your already printed one if you have already done it. Okay, so don't worry about that. Anyway, we're going to go check the interference pattern, and then we're going to move forward. I hope it's somewhere, somewhere, somewhere here. Stationary diffraction. Okay, wait. Just need to see the interface pattern. Um, it doesn't have that. Very sad. Okay, here it is. All right, very nice. So, um, so interface pattern basically looks like. Let me just copy this 
quickly and then we're going to look at this in detail. In fact, let's copy this whole question because then, yeah. Okay, copy. Let's put another page here. Okay. Right. Okay. So basically, what happens is that when you're like doing, uh, when you see the pattern, a pattern becomes like this. Why is it a pattern like this? Because what happens is there would be like a slit here, okay, like this, and then obviously there's going to be a slit in the middle. This is a double slit experiment question, and then obviously a slit here as well, okay. And it creates a pattern like this. So for this kind of pattern, you need to have coherent waves, all right? And they would basically write it like two dippers D1 and D2 produce coherent waves, all right, like that. Is it clear, everyone? Any questions? Can you do that? Sorry? Can you repeat that, like, please? A line. What I'm saying is, you see this pattern, right? This sort of pattern. This pattern is signature to Young's double slit. Okay? If it can only be formed if coherent sources are there. Is it clear? Otherwise, it cannot be formed. Are you repeating? Okay. This particular pattern. So now, we need to understand this pattern a bit carefully because the thing is that here, now, your screen, like your screen will be placed here, okay? So this would be your screen. And the distance from screen is this much, okay, like that. And slit separation is A, there, and blah, 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 it doesn't really matter, the waves are coming. Now, I just want to tell you two things. When you see a wave front, right? I, when you create waves like this, and you draw wave fronts, so what you do, to draw wave fronts, you connect the crest of a wave together. You guys agree? That means yeah. that in the solid line will represent crest. And if I, you know, draw drops, which are like middle of, you know, crest, like this is also crest, 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 so there will be a drop solid line. But for the drops, we can draw a dotted line. Do you guys understand? Or you could just say that between between two solids, there must be a trough. Is it clear? Or you can draw a dotted line. Now, I just want to tell you very important stuff here. Now, if I color this, like from dipper one, I'm gonna put it yellow. So the waves from the dipper one are diffracted like this, okay? Like that. I'm just coloring to show you the interference pattern that's happening, okay? And there's a bit of a mistake here. Let's fix it. Uh, right. And also this one. So the yellow lines basically represent the waves that are coming from the dipper one. And say the, um, okay, let's do purple. So the purple lines right here, they represent waves that are coming from the, The dipper two. So I'm doing it with my hands, so obviously there will be some, you know, problems, but it's all right. Now, what I want you guys to understand here 
is that if we see this, that means that in the middle of two solid lines, there must be troughs that exist, right? There will be troughs where I'm making a dotted line. Okay, just to show you, it's not required to do this, but this is just to, you know, make you understand how interference fringes are created. Anyway, so here, and for the yellow one, I'll make the dotted for yellow as well. Like this, like this. They will never give you the dotted line. You just need to uh, show that they're obviously um, in the center, okay? Between two solids, so you should remember that. Anyway, so we're pretty much done here, and now let's go. Now, you guys need to understand, if you look at this point, like, Right here, what do you see? Two dotted meet, right? You guys agree? Let me put it on right. If two dotted meet, when, you know, it means that troughs and troughs are meeting together, that means it is constructive interference. Similarly, if you go here, you might see two solids are meeting, which means Crest and crest are meeting, it is constructive interference. You guys understand this? Yes, please. Uh, something else was here. This. No. So you guys, uh, you guys are here. Khadija, Javeria. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what I was saying, if you look at this dot here, so two dotted lines are meeting, which means it is like troughs and troughs are meeting. And if you look at here, two solids are meeting, which means crest and crest are meeting. So it means it's, it's uh, constructive interference happening. Is it clear? Vajiha and Maham, do you understand as well? Okay. So if you go on a line like here, here also dotted, dotted, solid and solid, dotted, dotted, solid and solid. So all in, on this line, if I, if I equal, just go straight, so it means on this line, you have, you will have a maxima formed. Maxima means that it is going to be a bright spot or a huge displacement or a loud sound, whatever type of wave you're looking at. Similarly, if you go here, and then here, and then here, and then here, here. So in a straight line, you might realize all these, all these points, all these points here, would actually be creating my obviously my my drawing is a bit you know weak so I mean I drew it with three hands that's why there will be some some difference on this line but obviously this means that it's going to be like from here to here it will also be maximum okay then on the other side this one this one this one this one this one this one right so if you go in a straight line like this there will be a maxima as well. Now, so maxima basically means there's going to be a spot or something like a large displacement that you would be able to see. Now, if you look at it in the middle of this, you might realize something important. You might see at this particular point, the solid purple line is meeting with the dotted uh, yellow line, which means that a crest is meeting with the trough. You guys agree? Yes. Now, that, means, that means that it's going to cancel out the waves. So if I, if I go here or here, you might see solid meets with dotted everywhere. And if I go straight in this line, here you will see a minimum. 
because minima means that the waves are being disrupted by each other. Is it clear? And similarly, here, 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 here. So even if you don't make a dotted line, you would automatically know that if it's, it's a solid line, if a point is shown on the solid line at the center of it, then obviously this is going to show you a minima. And that's because uh, between two solid lines, there is a drop. And if a crest is going there, it means it is going to start. Good. Okay. So generally, what we do is we write that the central one is the zeroth order maximum. Then the first one is the first order, and then obviously the first order. And if let's suppose they like more maximums, then it would be called like second order and second order. Okay. And the the brightest one is the central order because it has to go the least distance compared to the other ones which need to travel more to get to a certain point on the screen. Is it clear? Any questions now? Okay. Now in this particular question says one condition that is required for observable interference pattern. All right. So one condition that is required for observable interference pattern is that the waves must be coherent. All right, so he has given the condition himself. So nice of him. Okay, so it says, describe how the apparatus is arranged to ensure the waves on the dippers are coherent. So how can we make sure that the phase difference stays constant, all right? One of the one of the ways you can basically um, do is you can connect connect both dippers okay both dippers with same motor. If you connect them with the same motor, then obviously uh, they, their vibrations or the way they are vibrating would be the same. All right. Anyway. Then say state one of the conditions that must be satisfied satisfied by the waves in order for the interference pattern to be observable. And uh, if interference needs to be observable, that means that if one wave like meets with the other wave, that's in construction constructive wave, it doesn't really matter because they're gonna make a bigger wave that we can see. But if one wave is bigger than the other wave in destructive, then some wave will still be left. That means that it won't be very sharp sort of image, right? So we want both these waves to have the same amplitude when they meet so that it, it gets completely canceled. So we have better contrast, all right? So that means we should have, they should have same amplitude. Okay, so you gotta remember that. Anyway, it says light from a lamp above the ripple tank shines the water onto the screen below. Describe one way, this uh, way of seeing the illuminated pattern more uh, quickly. Now, you might not know this, but there is a device. It's called uh, a strobe. Stroboscope or strobe is the same thing. So you can, a strobe can be used. A strobe, is basically a device with like holes in it. And when you move it, it seems like everything becomes still when you're looking through it. Is it clear, everyone? Yes, sir. You can also use like a video camera uh, to, uh, with slow motion playback to, you know, observe the interference pattern, but that's up to you. Whatever you want, that's okay. I just wanted to tell you what strobe is so that in case they ask you, you should know. But that's not really, you know, important. Anyway, now, actually, you know, in the next question, they had asked something very important in this, right? So what I'm going to do is, I will copy that question as well. Wait. So that was... Yeah, 
Okay, that's part difference. Uh, yeah, this part difference, and uh, we're gonna basically. I wanted to copy all of this, so I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna move forward. Wait. So okay, so I'm gonna copy this pattern first. And then do the rest of the question because I made some of the work on the pattern. I don't want that again. Copy to so solve this as a question from the past paper. Okay. Paste. Okay. Wait. I'm gonna post this uh, for you people so that you guys, what you missed, you can you know, recover from that. Okay. Uh, all right, we, we need all of this actually. I hope it comes here. Okay, never mind, we'll, we'll manage. Anyway, so now uh, part C of this question says the speed of the wave is this, calculate the period of the waves. And I just want to tell you that uh, when you have this sort of question where you want to find the period of the wave, obviously you need to have like the frequency, right? Because we need to use B is equal to F lambda, you have this. I don't think so they have given frequency in this question anyway. Uh, for that, usually what, what they do is they have the same uh, similar figure or it's up to the scale. So you can, you know, measure it using your scale. So you can do that and find it anyway. However, we would like to go to this point, which is very important. It says, figure 5.1 shows point X that lies on the crest of the wave D1 and midway between two adjacent crests. If you look at this point, it's basically like this point is like midway of two adjacent crests. What do you think is happening here? Like what, what would it probably be meeting here? What is midway between two crests? Yes, please. Anybody who can answer this? Um, a trough. A trough. Yeah, a trough. It means that, and this X is on the crest. So it means at this point, a trough is meeting a crest. So what do you expect to see here? Destructive interference. Yeah, destructive interference. Stress. Very good. And this same point, if they have given you a point like this, why? Then you would say, okay, that's a constructive interference. So that's what they're saying. They're saying that for the waves, the part difference. Okay. So uh, we're going to come back to the part difference. In fact, you can do it later as homework. But we're going to look at the phase difference. Do you know what is the phase difference between uh, destructive? Uh, <laughs> Uh, when when two waves destruct each other, do you know what the phase difference? It's no I. Oh. How did I figure out where where it's meeting? Like what would the value be? No, the value isn't there. What I did was I thought this way, Tija. I said the x is right now on one of the crests, right? So you agree? But where is this X lying? Where is this crest lying? It's lying in this region. And in the middle, there must be a trough of the other source. Do you understand? Yeah. But that means if I draw a dotted line here, like in your exam, you can also do that. So it means a solid line and a dotted line are meeting. So that means here, there has to be destructive interference here. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Do you understand this? But how it's like the path difference? What would the value for that be? Yeah, path difference. We will figure it out. I'll tell you. I'll tell you about the path difference when we come back. Okay. Don't worry about that. Anyway, now think about this way. So this means that the angle that you are seeing right now is basically um 
the, the angle could be like multiples of 180 degrees because 180 degree is the uh, difference, right? So if the phase difference, whenever they ask you if there's a phase difference, right? Okay, that's 180 degrees, okay? Now we need to look at the path difference and path difference is important because we need to know what is the difference between this, like what is the difference of path between two sources and this point. So how would you do this in the actual exam? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use uh, your uh, uh, ruler to do this, okay? So you are going to draw a line, a straight line from here to here, okay? This would be your first step. Then you're gonna draw a straight line from here to here. Is it clear? Atija? Yes, then what you're going to do is you're going to measure this, these lines. Okay, let's suppose this line was like five centimeter in the exam. This line came out to be three centimeter. So then the path difference would be five centimeter minus three centimeter, like that. Is it clear? Nothing else. Okay, sir. That would be how if a, if a figure, actual figure is given, you can always do this. If they, so can you also do part C, please? Part C, this one? Yeah, I can, I can definitely do this. It's very easy. Hadija, you just need to, you know, because between two crests, you should understand that's the wavelength. So you have to use your ruler to do this. So I can't really do this on my own, right? Okay. I don't have to do it digitally, right? So yeah, you can find the wavelength from here. And then you, you just need to use V is equal to F lambda. The speed is given. Is it clear? Okay, sir. Yeah. So just remember that this is how it, it should be done. Anyway, so now path difference, we are going to do that. The formula thing, we're going to do that, okay? Hold on. Now let's look at the experiment, okay? The double slit. The moment I'm going to read the question and it says, in an experiment, demonstrate two source interference, right? So it is two beams with two slits I should really understand that this is the double slit experiment. And do you guys know what formula do I use for double slit? AX equals to lambda T. AX equals to lambda T. Now let's figure out what is given. So A, it says how far the two adjacent interference fringes are. So we need X, we need to find that. The two slits are this much apart. So that would be A, right? And I'm gonna convert it into meters. And then it says distance is D. So D is four meters and Lambda is 550. Now everything is so easy because now you just need to put the whole thing into this. So Lambda will be 550 times 10 raised to minus nine. D will be four and A will be 0 0.50 times 10 raised to minus three. Can you guys please help me find this? Get me the answer in millimeter please. Okay, go on, please hurry up. Um, sir, it's 0 0.0036. 0 0.0036? So 4.4 millimeters. 4.4 millimeter, are you sure? Oh yeah, 0 0.036 meters would be, are you sure? 0 .00 no, sorry, it's 0 0.0044 millimeters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be then meters, and when you convert it, it will be 3.6 millimeter, which can be written as four, I think, something like that. I don't know. So it's actually 0 0.0044 meter. Okay, 0 0.0044 meters would be 4.4 .4 millimeter, right? So it would be so easy this way. Hello, Caroline. So that would be D. Is it clear? Any questions? Okay. Now, uh, this would be the same thing, um, just a similar type of question. 
So I I hope to you know finish this at least double slit today and then diffraction grating we can do it later. So what is the power difference between the light waves from two slits that meet at a second order dark fringe? What is the power difference? Okay, this this came from power difference. We're gonna do it later. Sorry, I put it wrong. All right. So now let's do this. You already know what principal superposition is. Uh, if you don't know. It is basically from the previous chapter. We're going to write when two waves, uh, when two or more waves meet at a point, the this resultant displacement of the wave formed, all right, is equal to the sum of individual displacements of the waves. Anyway, and coherence, you know, coherence means that it's it has to be uh, waves from waves that have uh, constant phase difference, all right. Even if you write what is meant by coherence, constant phase difference like this, they would accept it. Okay, you don't have to write the full line. Okay, then it says two coherent waves P and Q meet a point phase in phase and superpose. Wave P has an amplitude of one point five, intensity is I. The the resultant intensity of the point where the waves meet is three I. So it says calculate the amplitude of Q. Right, so it says that right now we should understand that there is a wave which has an intensity i that is p wave, and there's a q wave that we don't know what the intensity of that is. I think intensity of that is going to be it says the intensity of the new wave is 3i. Fine, so yeah, so when they meet together, they create a new wave with 3i intensity. We've got to find the amplitude here, okay? The amplitude of this one is 1.5. So let's do this. So we know intensity one over intensity two is equal to amplitude one square over amplitude two square. The intensity one is one point, uh, sorry, i. The intensity two is 3i. The amplitude is 1.5 squared and amplitude two is this much. So we're going to find i and i gets cancelled out. So a2 whole square becomes equal to, let me zoom it here, 1.5 whole square times 3. And can you please find a2 please? Six point seven five. Six point seven five. Six point seven five, and that's gonna be centimeter. I believe. I don't know what that was. Okay, that was centimeter. Now, if this is like you know the amplitude of Q and amplitude of P, the sum of these amplitudes created this amplitude, which was six point seven five, as you guys tell me. Okay. So if this was 1.5, AQ we want to find. So what would be the amplitude of Q, please? Could you please Sorry, sir. Uh, I guess we didn't take the square root of 6.75. It is actually 2.59. Okay, that's not good. It's all right. That means it is going to be 2.59. Yes. But then what, what would be the answer then for AQ? 1.09. 1.09, which is the 1.1. All right, is it clear, everyone? Do you guys understand the question now? So just use this anyway. Now, if I were you and I see something written as a double slit, which formula should I remember then? Lambda d is equal to ax. Yes, very good. Now you guys understand everything. And now you go to the next question. It says use the figure 5.2 to determine separation of slit A. We want this. We have this and we want this. So let's see what is X. Now X, I don't think X is given, but we have the wavelength 680. So we're going to write wavelength first. It's no problem. Nano is 10 raised to 1 minus 9. Okay, always convert it. And we also need to find X. We need A. Sorry, we need A. We need to find X and we need T. All right, so for x, you can pick any value. You can pick this value, which is easiest because that's four. And at four, the distance is two. So I'm gonna just use this. 4.0 times 10 is to power minus three because this was in millimeters and d was like 2.0 meters. Can you find a please?
Okay, yes. What you get? What you guys get? So it's zero point zero um or three point four into ten is probably minus four. Okay. So three point four into ten is to minus four should be the answer. You can recheck as well, okay? Anyway, then it says now the laser is now replaced by another laser that emits light of shorter wavelengths. Okay. On figure sketch a possible line to show the variation of x over d. So first of all, we should understand ax is equal to lambda d. So we want to find we want to draw a line of x over d. And uh, for that we have to have lambda over a. A would be the same. So if you have less lambda, then what is x over d? x over d basically is the change, right? And it means the gradient because there is x and there is d. So it means if you have smaller lambda, you will have smaller gradient as well. And smaller gradient would mean the line would basically somewhere, it would be something like this. Is it clear everyone? No, not like that. It's not small. It's, it's the same gradient. Line has to be a little bit flatter. Like this. Is it clear, everyone? And how did I know this? I just saw from the, um, I just, you know, moved the things that I needed on the other side, which were x one d. And then I saw that change in x or change in d is the gradient. And if you reduce the lambda, then obviously gradient is directly proportional, which means gradient will be reduced. Hence, we'll get the answer. All right. Any questions now? Okay. So now, all you need to do is, you guys, uh, you have to do this as homework. This would be your homework. And uh, some things, um, once we do path difference, then you can start doing the homework, OK? But that would be tomorrow then. I mean, from Monday onwards. All right, then. If you guys have no questions, uh, we'll end the class here and continue on Monday then.